Well, we're back with another Over the Shoulder with the Gunsmith. So, today we have a Heritage Revolver. So, I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings, but these are not my favorite gun. Um, I get it. They sell a lot of them. They're inexpensive. They're a cowboy type gun. They're super cool looking, you know, the way they work, when they work. And the reason I say that, and maybe I'm a little jaded, is just I have to work on a lot of them. Um, when you when I take a gun in and I work on it, when I return it to the customer, it's got to be in a safe condition. So, you know, some guys will bring this in for something simple like put on the new grips. Well, yeah, but the timing is way slow and it is on a lot of these. So people don't like to have to pay a whole bunch of money to fix an inexpensive gun, regardless. This one's kind of unique. So I'm going to open the loading gate and you can see brass. Yeah, she's loaded. So this one right here and this one right here are fired. I've checked that. I can run a little piece of spring stock down the front of the cylinder. These are fired. The one under the hammer is live and I believe the next two are live. The others I didn't check. The safety is in the on position so the hammer's back off of the firing pin. I'm trying to have this as safe as possible when we fool around with it. The complaint is it came in jammed up. So this is one of those, my neighbor took it, brought it to me. I thought I could fix it. I started pulling screws out and see that he started to pull this one out and realized that this is not right. So they brought it to me. And the guy, the guy that brought it to me is a great guy. He really is. But he's trying to fix, help it out, help his neighbor out. Uh, the cylinder is tight and it is tight. The center pin latch pushes over, but the center pin is tight. So I thought, well, maybe we're, we've got a round halfway between the cylinder and the barrel, but it's a live round and I've already checked it and I can see daylight between the back of the barrel and the face of the cylinder, barrel cylinder gap. So the cylinder is not bound up against the barrel. Uh, I can see space all the way around here. Uh, the cylinder stop is out of the notch right there. And I think that's kind of what's going on is the hand, the cylinder stop, all that is bound up. And this screw here, of course, is pulled out. So what I'm going to do is we're going to unjam this first, figure out what's going on and what it's going to take. Uh, I may not do a repair on that on camera simply because the customer kind of wants an idea what it's going to cost. So I'm going to have to get it tore apart safely. We figured that would be a good thing to show you guys. So you can do it a bunch of different ways. First thing, again, the safety's on. If I could remove the hammer or the firing pin, I would, but you can't. So I'm going to take the grips off first, and then I'm going to take the grip frame off. And by taking the grip frame off, I'll remove the mainspring so the hammer won't have any tension at that point. And that'll help it be safe. I hope. You can see also that somebody's been fixing it. We got a nice hardware store silver screw right there. I give Heritage credit. They stuck with standard thread pitches, or somebody's retapped that one. So as I'm loosening these screws, you can see that the grip frame is sliding down. It's because the, ha the hammer spring, mainspring, is pushing against the hammer. go. So at least at this point, there's no tension on the hammer. See that hammer's tight. So what I'm going to do now is remove that hammer screw. And honestly, I think that's probably going to loosen things up because I think the hand is what's bound up on some of the things.
Oh, she is tight. All right, let's take the cylinder stop spring out. Now our trigger's loose. That screw will come out, which they'd already started to take out. There's our cylinder stop. But our hammer is still super tight. So I take my glasses off so I can look at things here a little bit. So our hammer pin, or screw, excuse me, was super tight. The hammer's now free. Nothing appears broken. Cylinder's now free to rotate partway, and then it gets a little snug. So let's get some of these live shells out of here, shall we? Fired, fired, fired. Live, live, and now our cylinder comes out. So this little plunger fell out. That is the loading gate plunger fits in there. So we got some nice shiny, Bob used to call them barf marks. But gouge mark, there's a pretty good gouge there where something was wedged in tight. Interesting. So everything was tight, even after the trigger and cylinder stop were out of the gun. So the, I'm going to put it back together, see what I can see. Usually when the single actions bind up like that, it has to do with the cylinder stop leg. You, you cock the gun and then you go to lower it to the, to the safe notch and this pops back up in and the hand gets underneath the ratchet pad and you can't, the cylinder stop is in its notch when you're trying to cock the hammer. That wasn't the case on this one because we took the cylinder stop completely out of the gun and the hammer was bound up tight and the cylinder was bound up. So, what was going on? Got a lot of filings. An aluminum frame on this one. A lot of shiny filing spots. Anything look odd to you guys? Un unfired live round? Fired round right in front of the rim? Got a little belt? What the heck? More than one. Here's the other one. All of these. So we've got more than one problem with our gun. You can see some scratch marks there. That'd be where I don't think the hammer's going to hit there because it's clear back here. Hand shouldn't hit there, so that's something else. The little belt on the cases is from this excessively deep chamfer to each chamber. Boy, I don't like that. 
Well, I'm going to talk with the customer about that because it's just a matter of time for, you know, this is going to develop a little bit of end shake. So the cylinder is going to come forward. A little bit of end shake means a little bit of head space, which means the case under pressure is going to back up. And that's just going to get worse and it's going to want to rupture. So that's, this gun actually probably needs to go back to the factory uh, or get a new cylinder. I mean, a new cylinder can be fitted up. I don't like that. That's, yeah. Uh, I'm going to, actually, I'm not even going to fix this gun. Uh, at this point, I got it unjammed. I don't like those cases being bulged right there in front of the rim. They're, they're ready. They're getting close to rupture. Um, so I don't want to give this back to them in a working condition, even, even if I just put it back together, it's kind of, they need to get that fixed. They need to get that fixed. So. I'm trying to see if I had one ratchet pad that was really chewed up bad, then I might be of the notion that that's what was causing the the binding. A little bit of crud underneath the hand spring right there. Hmm, this is a tricky one. Not an easy one to know. Huh. Well, I can tell you what my gut's telling me, what I think the issue was. So the cylinder was in the gun, the hammer was down. So Again, if the gun is sitting like so, hammer down. We're kind of right here like this. Now, the cylinder stop was not in the notch. Remember, I even took the cylinder stop out and didn't free it up. So, I think that the hand was wedged in the top of the hand here. And then this is standard Colt style. Then as it raises, and it rotates the second shelf, the second ratchet pad, excuse me, slides on top of the second shelf, top shelf, second shelf, or lower shelf. And we were bound up, and I'm thinking that that's kind of what's going on, is that that wouldn't transition well on at least one of these. So you can see where my train of thought was going here, first off, I had to get the gun apart to make it safe. We want it safe, and then we need to be able to determine what was causing the problem. So I don't know 100%. I'm 90% sure that the hand binding up on the, the ratchet pads here. So I would probably, to fix that, if I was going to fix that, is I'd probably put about a 45 degree angle on this second shelf, just a little bit, go in maybe a quarter of the, the width. Just come in just a little bit. That way you can transition over instead of wedging against the side of it. And just looking. We got right there, we got a big burr. There's one there as well. Got one down there. That could have been it, but I don't think so. Because if that was the case... Again, I'm thinking out loud because that's kind of why you guys are watching these. That would be over the top of it. It shouldn't. And this has room to spring back, so it shouldn't. It's when it transitions. So that's where my thought process is going. That's probably what I would try to do is, is on that is, is adjust that. Uh, I don't know what the timing is like. It may be off so much that I need to stretch this hand, uh, adjust the cylinder stop so it does what it's supposed to when it's supposed to, although we know it wasn't causing the problems. The trigger, sear spring, cylinder stop, uh, and cylinder stop spring all were out of the gun and the cylinder still bound up. It was the hand in relationship to the cylinder. 
and the hammer, and it was wedged in there so tight that the hammer pin was was super tight. So I, I kind of know what's going on there. Pretty sure we know what's causing it. Uh, the cases uh, are just, I, I'm just, I'm really not <laughs> very happy with the fact that they're bulged all the way around. And you can see, you can see that chamfer. That's super excessive. So that chamfer allows the cases to go in further, giving it a little bit more head space. So when they fire, they back out and swell the, the cases, making them little pregnant cases, little, little bulges right there. So I need to have a talk with my customer. Um, I hope you guys got something out of this. I mean, you know, we, we kept the gun pointed in a safe direction. I made notes on the tag, you know, live rounds, be aware. Um, I did make sure that the safety was in the on position so the hammer couldn't hit the firing pin regardless. So if this was a bolt action rifle of some sort, um, a lot of times I can take the bolt out, you know, now you got the firing pin out of the gun, the live round in it, jam mechanism, whatever. Um, and usually I'll do that. I'll make the gun safe for me to be fooling around with it on the bench while I try to get the live round out of it. Sometimes you just simply can't. Um, I've seen people take uh, on auto pistols, take the hammer, pull it back, and then take like duct tape, duct tape it over the top of the hammer and under the, the bottom of the grip and holding it back. Then it's it's not going to fall, you know, as long as you don't tear through that duct tape and use enough of it. You can use rope, you can use string, you can use leather. Um, just, you know, we work in a, these, these are dangerous items. And so uh, when handled improperly, we have to keep your head screwed on straight. Um, and then I, I, I thought, you know, we check to see you know if they were live rounds they said there were some live rounds in the gun so i mean they didn't just come in and throw the gun on the counter and say hey it don't work they they did tell me hey we got some problems what's going on so anyhow i'm rambling um i'm going to talk to my customer about this um if we get a chance to fix it after i talk to him uh on camera we will if not you saw kind of my thought process what we did and how we went about it so good luck be safe